All right, so um, looks like we have a quorum on both sides of the RTM and the town council. Um, so we'll get started. We'll call this meeting to order um, at 6.02. Um, let's see. We have Representative Hanscom, Cassieri, Flax, Gothier, Richards, Rusk, Dean Shinbrot, and myself. Um, and we have Councilors Bumgardner, and heed in attendance. Um, so with that, we can get started. Um, any communications or reports from anyone as far as uh, meetings or emails or? Just to let you know, Chairman, I just, uh, uh, Councilor uh, Borderline just texted, she's having trouble getting in. I'll resender the information. Great, thank you. Oh, uh, Councilor Heed, are you raising your hand? Yes, uh, sorry, uh, are you raising, are you opening communications for all of us or just for RTM at this point? Oh, uh, we have a quorum on both sides. Uh, if Councilor Bobgarner is okay with it, we can open it up and I'm confident that the Councilor Borland should make it in soon. All right. Um, I could go ahead and do a communication then. Uh, right. Last week I attended, a, as you know, I attended a meeting with the police uh, with uh, Councilor Franco and representatives um, from the RTM, uh, Melinda Cassieri and Kathy Chase. And I, I had to think about it, like what, what we, discussed uh, with the police uh, before I had some takeaways and I just wanted to share those didn't know if this would be the appropriate time. Um, hmm. As communications though, so or just just leave it at that and say I went. Yeah, let's let's hold it there and uh, we'll circle back on that during some general conversation moment. All right. Um, all right. And uh, Councilor Bordelon is on now. Okay, great. Um, I see her in the attendees side. Oh, there she is. All right, came over. All right, so um, any other communications or reports? All right, did uh, I sent out, it was a bit last minute, but I, I did manage to finish the minutes from the um, August 20th joint session. Um, and I sent that out probably about like an hour ago. Um, so if we want to take a quick review of those and see if uh, we can approve those and get those in the record, I think that would be good. You want a motion to approve the minutes, Rep. Thomas? I am open to that if so, if so moved. So moved. All right. Very well. Moved by Flax. Do we have a second? Kasiri second. All right. Um, any discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the minutes? Say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm going to um, abstain. This is Councilor Rusk or Representative Rusk. Representative Gothier is abstaining. I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. And um, I'll take a vote. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, uh, committee meeting minutes. Um, so moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? I uh, passes unanimously. Same on our side, uh, except for the abstentions. Um, all right, so the first order of business, um, well, uh, citizens' petitions. 
Are we good to go with that, Manager Burt? Yes, we only have one person signed up, uh, JC Ambois, who is in attendees. All right, I see he just slid over to a speaking position. So, Mr. Ambois, you may carry on. Uh, Manager Burt, I'm not sure how Okay, to can you hear me? Oh, there he is. Yes, Mr. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Chairman Thomas. Good evening, elected town officials, town staff, and the Groton community at large. My name is Jean-Claude Amboise, and I live at 169 Shenacosset Parkway. The reason for my communication tonight is to voice my disapproval and concern for the direction that some of our elected town officials are taking in this extreme overreach regarding police oversight in the town of Groton. To begin with, I have been vocally opposed to the inception of this RTM court group in July and August, first and foremost for procedural issues. As a, mem as a former four-term District 2 RTM member, one of which, as an RTM moderator, I've watched and read meeting minutes closely in regards to the improper procedures used to authorize this committee's work. The moderator, with the request of an RTM member, established this committee, which was correct. However, there are, in my opinion, a rule violation based on the current RTM rules and procedures. This court committee is, in fact, a direct overlap under Rule 6.3.1 with the RTM Public Safety Committee, who is tasked to oversight the police budget and other public safety matters. Why would the RTM Public Safety Committee not be assigned to do fact-finding and reports on police matters? The moderator insists, however, that because there is adequate members for both major political parties, which lie in this rule for minority representation, which is a statutory thing, that, it, uh, that this other part of the rule does not apply. The proper procedure should have been brought, uh, this item should have been brought to discussion and a vote in the RTM Rules and Procedures Committee for overlap, which did not occur. After speaking to a retired town clerk who served in that role for years, is it, they are in agreement with this, and I feel confident in my validity of my argument. Also, the legislative arm of the Groton Town Governance lies with the Town Council and not with the RTM powers per Town Charter 4.1.2. It has been stated by the moderator in public meetings and to me by email communications that CORC is a fact-finding mission to report to the RTM the feasibility of some type of civilian oversight of town police. However, the correspondence I had with the moderator does not reflect this. Her response to me regarding this issue in email stated, it is to conduct research to provide to the town council to help them with their deliberations. Which explanation is it? Since when did RTM start taking on a supportive legislative role, especially considering the town council did not formally ask for the RTM's help? I could see if the town council voted as a group to include or ask the RTM's assistance, but this was not the case when Cork was initially formed. And now Cork and the reestablished Town Council Public Safety Committee have become a joint group to investigate and legislate. This also is not in order and should have been forwarded to the town attorney for clarification. I will include the cited email correspondence along with this uh, correspondence to the town clerk for the record. Another issue I have is with our pro professional town staff and how they have been poorly treated by some, not all, elected officials at these meetings when providing taxpayer pay funded legal opinions and data on professional policing regardless uh, regarding policies and procedures several times i heard a few of our elected officials respectfully disagree with legal staff when they themselves have absolute zero legal experience and or real public safety experience elected individuals cannot keep saying in one breath that they fully support the police over and over again then use but or with all due respect right after it negates the false praise you gave prior and is rude and disrespectful to the consummate paid professionals who work hard for all of our community. A great remedy to better understand what policing entails is to have town council and RTM members take a quote unquote active shooter or a quote unquote shooter don't shoot or ride along training to realize how well trained and competent our officers are in effectively responding to situations that require split second decision making. The only resource of any business or department has that appreciates over time is its staff members. And I feel that our police have been negatively impacted and demoralized by comments made by in these meetings by some members. 
As, state, as stated in previous Town Council Public Safety Committee and RTM Cork meetings on this subject, very few committee members are asking for or listening to our police officers, thankfully that's happening today, perspectives to determine how they navigate their work on the day-to-day -day as and as untrained individuals sit in judgment of the rigorously trained professionals who keep our community safe. What I have heard is much speculation about the minuscule past experiences individuals uh, that our elected officials have had, making them quote unquote qualified to understand and speak on the topic of policing. This is laughable, if not sad, to hear this on a routine, routine basis. Please start talking about what you have done and listen more to what they, the professionals, are doing and dealing with regularly. As a professional teacher, one of the key components to prove an argument is show, so, show data. So far over the past months, I have seen no data provided in town or city information that supports upending the current police policies and procedures and adding enhanced police oversight. No documented proof that our trained professional taxpayer funded police staff is racist and is acting inappropriately on duty, which would warrant creating an untrained citizen review board. One it minute. might be an issue with other areas nationally or even in the cities or towns in the state of Connecticut, but no evidence shows that Groton is. The current policies and procedures, which to my knowledge have been recently updated by the town council around a year ago, are currently working well for our town. Why are our elected officials looking for problems that do not exist here? With all that being said, let me now turn to my personal testimony about town and city policing. We should all be grateful, which I for one am, for such a wonderful public service professionals here in the town of Groton. I have had direct contact with town and city police in a personal capacity approximately seven times since I have moved to Groton in 2005. In all my encounters, I was never treated with disrespect, nor had the feeling I was being targeted for racism. What I did get was the impression that all these male and female police officers were involved, that were involved were nothing but responsive, kind, considerate, and professional. This is my declaration. I would personally like to thank all of our town and city chiefs, Pissarro, and the city spellmen, the supervisors, and the line-level police officers for the tireless work they do every day. You are not told this nearly enough, so I thank you for all you do. This resident supports you 100%. Lastly, in order to create a civilian oversight board, it, is said, it has been said numerous times by the town attorney and others it would require a change to the charter. If any of you remember a few years ago when the referendum for changing the charter came up, myself and a bipartisan group of citizens were firmly against it. I will continue to maintain that position on this issue as well. Vote no to this charter revision. There are many things we can do to support our police as well as our community at large without right, a that, long that, and extensive taxpayer funded charter revision. One recommendation for the town is to have community outreach similar to what the city of Groton is doing to form a pact group. Another would be to reinvest in community policing, which was eliminated due to lack of funding in previous year's budgets when I served on the RTM. Many RTM members at that time, including myself, were against those reductions, but they happened and we are now living with those budget decisions. If residents in some of our diverse socioeconomically impacted communities had a consistent presence of police officers interacting and communicating with the residents in these areas, it can have a significant beneficial impact for community police relations. To have full transparency with the public, I strongly encourage that at the next monthly regular meeting for both RTM and town council, to make a motion to be made by an RTM representative or town council respectively for each body to vote for an or vote for or against the establishment of a civilian police oversight board. This will be a ceremonial vote, but vote, but we would benefit uh, the vote as a voting public to determine where their elected officials stand on the issue for the record. Groton is a great town with a great diverse community of inhabitants from all works of life. I am not saying that by any means we are perfect, but I am. That's five but minutes. I, for one, am completely, time for I am completely pleased on how our police platform, under the ever increasing excruciating. All right. Um, so, uh, thank you, Mr. Arbaz, for your comments. Um, duly noted, understood, and um, do uh, that is the end of the people that are in the line to speak. Or do we have any others, Mr. Burke? No others. Okay. Uh, very well then. Um, response to citizens' petitions. Do, does anyone want to respond to, to Mr. Amblas? All right. I, I'd like to. Okay. 
I, I just would like to say I, I agree with Mr. Ambois. I was on the RTM when he was a moderator. I learned a lot from him. He is a stickler for rules because rules give us guidance and structure. And I, and I do agree with him. All right, thank you. Uh, I see Representative Gauthier and then Russ. I'd just like to uh, thank him for, for sharing his thoughts with us. I know he's emailed the RTM at large a few times, but just uh, encouraged by his words and uh, his support for our police officers. That's all, so thank you for coming, Mr. Amboss. And Representative Rusk. Thank you. Um, I also wanna thank Mr. Ambrose for coming. Um, it really has been what I've heard throughout the town um, I was just in a meeting with town residents that they said the same thing, that um, they don't see there being a reason for a civilian oversight committee. Um, so I just wanted to thank him for his words and for speaking for a lot of people in the community. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and Representative Cassieri. Thank you. Just would also like to thank him for coming out tonight and speaking and echoing a lot of what the town police officers are saying as well. So thank you. All right. And Councillor Bordelon. Thank you. I just wanted to thank him for, you know, his position and thoughts that have come forward. Um, there are some parts of that um, that I feel can be seen um, or maybe taken out of content, content context um, despite the position um, you know I do not feel that people even though people disagree with the position I, I, I don't feel that just because it's not the position of what maybe the particular um, thing in question is it doesn't mean by asking that one is be being disrespectful for asking um, with all you know with the fact that you know, the state has made some changes and are pushing a new, you know, um, thing coming down. It's important that we do look at it. And yes, Groton is a great place to live. And once again, no one has denied that our police officers do not do a great job. Um, but having a chance to look at something and make some changes as um, some of the changes that Chief Fasaro has stated, you know, more transparency as far as putting things on a website and things like that that's already a step that's come forward by having these meetings, some changes like that, that have been discussed before us. So um, I think it's important that we take the time and look at certain things and look where um, areas, um, it doesn't have to be called a police uh, oversight. Um, there's many avenues, but having this group formed, I also was also told that you know, um, the moderator did contact the town council, um, uh, our, our mayor, to um, try to ask if we were going to set something up first and then collaboratively, you know, then she, um, the RTM first set something up and then the safety committee was formed on the town council. So I think it's great that um, the RTM is doing the work. All the op opinions from what I've read in, um, I saw all of, uh, Representative Cassieri's statements that she sent via email has spoke at the uh, town council last night has said in your meetings after I read the minutes and have been added into what is looking like what well, soon will be a final draft. Every opposition, anybody that's for it, all of it's in there. So I, I don't want to discredit any of the research that people are doing because that's not fair to say either. Um, but with all due respect, I, you know, I respectfully take what um, um, Amboise is stating, and um, I thank him for coming. Thank you. Uh, Representative Gauthier, did you want to speak again? I see your hand still up, or is that an old hand? No, it, it wasn't lowered after I finished speaking. I'm sorry. I'll lower it now. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'll just, um, uh, one point of clarification, I guess, and, and Councillor Bordelon did touch on it, uh, just to clarify, uh, I thank Mr. Amboise for his concern and his interest and his comments. Uh, duly noted, um, as far as like the disagreement on how this committee came to be, however, um, you know, it is a research body, for one, um, and we 
did uh, the moderator did approach the mayor to to see about doing a joint um, a joint uh, project and and that idea never actually made it to the council um, for it to have the council at large decide whether they wanted to move forward with that idea. So, you know, if there's concern about why the town council didn't, you know, move on that, there's, you know, the, the, the concern should be uh, focused elsewhere. Um, now, in regards to our mission, you know, we are doing research and, um, and we are compiling some recommendations based on our research. So, uh, taking uh, great pains to make sure that the report is inclusive of all the diversity of opinion of this body, uh, as well as having some sense of, uh, some representation of the consensus that we do share. Um, so I would, I would encourage you now that at this, at this point, we should just, you know, let us finish our, our job and uh, the report will come out and it'll be there for public perusal and um, consideration and what the town council chooses to do with it and how the community chooses to use it is up to up to them you know up to every individual in this town so that's all i got to say about that so uh with that being said uh, anyone else have yes, a comment? remarks um thank you uh representative Embra, for attending uh, our meeting tonight um obviously you know, given your experience in our town having served on the rtm um, always in a, a bipartisan fashion. Um, I, along with um, many other community members, and not to speak for them, but uh, have the, again, the utmost respect for your service and your contributions to our community uh, and certainly your perspective on this issue. Um, uh, so when you make the statement that there are many police officers as well as uh, community members that feel demoralized by uh, the process uh, both Cork has undertaken as well as uh, Public Safety Committee to establish a, a civilian police review board. Um, you know, I wonder kind of what uh, what you've been hearing and, and why you state that because obviously uh, I um, one would take issue with that because uh, that is unacceptable in my eye. All right. Um, thank you for that. Now on to the agenda at hand. Um, we were going to... Uh, Chairman Thomas. Oh, yeah. I see that um, uh, Mr. Umbra was um, muted. I didn't know if he wanted to, to answer that question at all. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Um, Mr. Amboise, do you want to respond? Well, firstly, I'd like to finish my comments because I wasn't given a time frame to stop talking and I was almost done so that would be greatly appreciated um, but um, I mean I, I'm, I'm a citizen here uh, town council Gar bum Gardner and I'm telling you I don't feel comfortable with what the approach you guys are doing and I said it pretty clearly in my uh, comments this evening we got a lot of problems in Groton and our police are not one of them. And of all the meetings that I've continuously heard from you guys, and I've been watching diligently since July, uh, there's no evidence to prove that our police are doing wrong. And I understand and realize that there needs to be transparency, transparency enacted. However, the approach that you all have taken to put, as, and I have to uh, give all respect due to uh, Representative Caseri, her uh, words yesterday evening were very eloquent and on, on point. Uh, to put a untrained, uh, uneducated body um, together to scrutinize police uh, oversight is, is just wrong-sighted in my opinion. Um, I've spoken to people that are on RTM. I'm not going to call them out by name. I've spoken to people in my community, and I won't call them out by name because I'm speaking for myself right here that I'm satisfied with the police operations the way that they exist right now, and they don't necessarily agree with the approach that the RTM and the town council has taken. And uh, with that, I'll uh, leave it there. Thank you, um, Mr. Embro. Thank you as well. All right, so um, any other further comments? Representative Richards? Thank you. Um, I would, I guess, just 
um, respond to that a little in, in saying that I, I'm not, I'm not sure where the, uh, the thought is coming from to say that the RTM or even our court committee or even the public safety committee are, are putting together a review board. I, I saw our task as looking at what are the options for oversight and one of them is not doing anything and we haven't made a decision on what we're doing. We're having a discussion about what those options are and that's what I, I see as our business here on the court committee. Thank you. Councillor Heed. Uh, thank you, Representative Thomas. Uh, I'll just say two quick things. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I, I take issue with the idea that you can't put volunteers in charge of uh, oversight. We have volunteers running all kinds of boards and commissions across the town. They just wrote, volunteers just rewrote the uh, zoning regulations. You know, that, that said, I don't in any way mean to um, say that we need to have one. And I think that's, that's a question that, uh, you know, as uh, Representative Richards just mentioned, um, I think the committee may be looking at what do we need to do, but we probably ought to back up and figure out, do we need to do anything yet? Um, so uh, that's, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. And did I see Representative Hanscom? Did you have your hand up? Yes, I did. I just wanted to clarify too. Um, I read through everyone's um, like homework, and I was interested to see Kate Kate Richards. It actually one like her recommendation includes including like the police and civilians like together as one committee working together. You know, I just was curious if other folks had read that and um, were aware because I think that could be like a middle ground, perhaps. I don't know. Agreed. Thank you for that, Representative Hanscom. Yeah, I think that that is something that that is uh, being overlooked in a lot of these communications is that there's a broad, broad swath of middle ground that that, that is available. Um, so, you know, and again, like we're just doing research and offering some recommendations based on the research that we've done. So like we're not writing legislation here. That's going to be up to the town council and public safety committee. Uh, we're just talking. And we're going to share our thoughts with the community at large. So um, Representative Rusk, did I see your hand up? Um, it was, and then I lowered it. But um, I just wanted to touch on that. The, and I try not to compare the city with the town. I know I'm a city resident and that I work for the city. But um, the city has started a pact committee, which is policing community together. Um, it started almost immediately after the initial protest that um, the protest march that happened when um, we had some young people who really called for some action from our um, police departments. And um, city council passed that right away. And um, we've had multiple meetings of the pact and we're actually, actually having our first event this weekend. Um, I think it's a great way for people to get their thoughts out. I think it's a great way for people to get to discuss with the police what the police are doing. The police can explain their side. Um, residents can talk about their side and it's a great way to work together. Um, just my two thoughts. Thank you, Representative Rusk. Um, Representative Hanscom, you're done? Or I see your hand there again. No. Okay. Oops. Um, and just want to recognize moderator Evan as well. Um, do you have anything you want to offer into this aspect of the conversation or shall we move on to the next item? Well, I, I thank you, uh, uh, Chair Thomas. Uh, I was late because I was at a liaison meeting and <laughs> I saw Representative Flack scooted out and I, <laughs> I didn't. Um, so I'm late and I missed a great deal of what uh, was said. So uh, I will just say that um, I agree with what Representative Richards, how she clarified this, which is that, you know, this is a committee to research it, to look at a diversity of options. I've been on many of these um, calls and I don't find anything that's being said at these meetings to be disrespectful or demoralizing. So I don't know where that comes from. 
Um, I, I feel like you, this committee and this joint committee has worked really productively, really, you know, really put in a lot of effort to research um, and done a lot of outside research to put this together. So uh, I'm quite impressed. And I think that there is, you know, what I've heard is there's a diversity of opinion. One of the things that um, I heard was there might be a need for a survey or some way to know if, you know, to kind of find out what the community is. Certainly, uh, Mr. Amboise speaks for himself, and uh, I have no idea how many other people, but I do know for a fact that there are many other people, um, including my children, who feel very strongly on the other side. So because they're not speaking here doesn't mean that there are not uh, residents of the town of Groton who feel strongly that um, that there should be some, whether it's a packed uh, model like the city has or another model. Um, but I mean, certainly fact finding might say that we need to um, uh, find that out. And I, I'd also like to uh, just put it out there. Again, I'm not really weighing in on the models and the research. Um, I, and I, you know, I don't know if Ms. Rambois said that what I did was incorrect. Uh, it is in our rules and it, it is correct. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I, um, I do think that research would be one of the, the good ways to move forward and to have an appendix with the questions that have been put together an appendix and uh, maybe other appendices with, with the research that's been collected and the diversity of opinions. So it's not just one consensus opinion that needs to come out of this group, uh, but rather a breadth of voices. And that's, I think, the real, um, you know, the strength of the RTM when you have 41 members um, you know, from all areas of the town and, uh, you know, different uh, political affiliations that you can, can hear that. And so I just really think that there's strength in this. And again, I haven't, um, I haven't heard anything that, that has been disrespectful. I've, I've heard really amazing, thoughtful, sensitive um, comments about this. So that, that would be my comment. Thank you, moderator Evan. All right, so any other comments? Yeah, one, one last uh, comment, I guess, on uh, citizen, our citizens' uh, petitions, uh, reactions. Um, you know, I, we, tonight we've had three agenda items um, to deliberate on, um, or agenda items that, um, that afforded the community to participate. So. Um, one of them being um, police officers, uh, the other being, um, you know, obviously concerned citizens uh, like uh, Mr. Ambra uh, and our town manager. Um, and so, you know, again, we've afforded countless opportunities to um, individuals, especially um, you know, folks we've heard a lot, police officers are concerned. Um, aside from the town manager, um, you know, looking to coordinate meetings um, you know, privately amongst um, you know, council members like myself and, and uh, the police department, I have not engaged in any um, personal discussion amongst police officers and obviously would welcome the opportunity to do so at this committee um, as uh, that opportunity was afforded tonight as well. So um, I'd just like to note that again, we had an agenda item um, that was very specific uh, in that we al allowed and afforded concerned police officers to speak at this meeting. Um, and so um, to my knowledge, um, we did not hear from any police officers, nor did the town manager to speak tonight. And again, that opportunity was afforded up until um, the deadline of yesterday. But I know um, myself, along with uh, Chairman uh, Thomas, would be more than willing to accommodate any person who'd be willing to speak. So um, I just note that because uh, we heard in uh, our own council meeting uh, that that wasn't the case, uh, that you know there are people who feel silenced and feel excluded from the process. Um, but it can, it's anything but. So I just wanted to note that on the record. Uh, thank you for that, Council, Councillor Bumgarner. And uh, yeah, agreed. I, I was going to echo that sentiment. Um, the invitation is standing um, for this evening. And um, it's my understanding that, that we have no officers. Uh, Mr. Burt, is that correct? That is correct. And as a reminder, I, I uh, let the chair know earlier, I have to be on another call at around seven. So if you want me to talk, we should get to it pretty quick here. Roger that. Um, I see Representative Cassieri and Councillor Bordelon. And so uh, let's do Representative Cassieri. Thank you. 
I, I just wanted to put it out there that um, I don't really think that these meetings are an appropriate place for paid town police officers to come and speak their minds. They're not going to feel comfortable coming on a recorded um, session that is available on YouTube later for their words to be potentially taken out of context later. They have to police our community. And if I were in their shoes, if I was still a paid police officer, I would not come on a forum like this and speak my mind for my words to be potentially used against me later. Um, this is not a political position for them. This is their jobs. This is their careers. And I think that if we're going to um, make an attempt to listen to them, then it needs to be in a more private setting. And to add on to that, that is what many officers have told the Chief Pissarro. They just don't feel comfortable in this in this setting. All right, for, the, for the record, we did broaden the invitation to include emails and letters and uh, other sort of written statements. And um, and Mr. Bird, for the record, also uh, tonight, I, I would definitely be open to going up there and meet with them. I was never given the invitation um, back in the day uh, when invitations were going around, uh, nor recently. Um, but I am more than happy to do that. I have a schedule. I could, I could make one of those shift changes, uh, for four o'clock, I believe is one of them. Is that correct? I believe that's their shift changes, but, uh, the, the chief has thrown out to them to see if they want to meet with anyone else. Uh, so far there's been no takers, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bordelon. Thank you. Um, I was just echoing what Councillor Baumgartner had stated. Um, I too, um, you know, the offer that originally came out was on a night right before the uh, first safety committee from the, the town police um, saying that they would be really interested in meeting and they wanted to meet during shift changes, as I stated last night at the town council meeting. Unfortunately, the 8, 12, and 4 does not really work for a business hour working mother. And when I asked when would the next one be, and um, the, I was told someone would get back to us, we have to schedule through the town manager. And then uh, Councillor Franco did approach me for another <clears throat> second attempt, again for a four o'clock visit, which I, you know, at that point, I know Councillor Heed, Cassieri, and several others also had gone, and I was not able to um, unfortunately switch my schedule at that. At that time, I was, you know, it was been said that, you know, they they met with anywhere from 15 to 20 officers with COVID as we're meeting Zoom now because we have less than 15 people here and we're not able to meet. I personally don't feel comfortable. I know just like officers myself, um, we are frontline workers and, you know, um, in a smaller group, I would consider it um, and or maybe a Zoom meeting possibly, but I'm still waiting um, as as um, town manager Burt just stated, maybe another offer had come through today and I will check on that. Um, but I would be considered, I would still be willing to meet. It's just hard on those times, but I do respect the fact that those times are based upon um, their shift change schedule. So um, I know it was stated um, by uh, representative Cassieri um, with no disrespect to you. And it was stated that people um, would not attend and are not reaching out. And so I know last night, several counselors did say, state that we have, but the times just didn't work. So that part of your submission to this, um, I feel, you know, doesn't really fully represent um, the actual effort or attempt. But um, with that, I'm still open to meeting. And, and um, I know um, there's other opportunities or maybe, um, meeting outside in the community and talking at a picnic table at Washington Park, maybe um, with several officers or another way, but um, I, I open, I'm open to the invitation. Thank you. Representative Gauthier. Uh, yes, I'd just like to say I was unaware of um, this invitation Bye. or that there was Bye. something getting set up. Um, if I could just Bye. be included Bye. in any of those communications so I can make myself available, that would be greatly appreciated. Bye. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to be uh, a little blunt here. Um, I think first of all, we need to move on from this, but uh, what some of the officers have said is besides the fear of saying something that can be used against them in writing or verbally is they have seen social media posts from some here that made them think 
whether right or wrong, that there's a predisposed ending to where that person, these people want to be. They don't feel like the members are all open-minded and willing to actually change their mind if they had further information. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but that's been relayed to me many times. Um, so I don't know what the chances are of getting meetings together. I don't want you to get your hopes up, but it's been relayed to them. It's up to them. Um, but I'd like to move on because I've got about 17 minutes to give comments. After that, well, I think we can probably cap the conversation easily and, and say, well, this is a great case in point as to why like some police and community um, connection is is uh, improvement. Would we, we could we could do well to have an improved connection in, on some aspects because that sort of distrust um, on on either side or both sides is is definitely problematic. Um, all right, so moving on. Uh, so we wanted to get just to have a conversation with the town manager, um, similar to our, the conversation we had with the police chief in regards to possibilities, um, um, any sort of problems. Uh, we've all been around this a couple of times, so I'm just gonna open the floor and uh, see if anyone wants to, to uh, start the conversation. I'd like to kind of give my comments if that's okay. Sounds good. First, and then we can go from there. Uh, First of all, I do want to acknowledge, I think we all agree that we've got one of the best police departments around. Um, they're fantastic. Uh, I think we all do support them. Um, uh, we all have differing opinions, but we all definitely support them. Um, I, I understand the fears of our officers over changes. Nobody likes change. It could affect their livelihoods, potentially place them in increased danger. And I have seen personally firsthand um, where members of the public have made inappropriate rude comments to our officers. A couple of times I've seen that. Um, however, I uh, also believe there is this system, uh, systemic racism in the country. And I do believe people have inherent biases, but I will say our officers get the inherent bias training. So they're likely better than most or a lot of the public, uh, just to point that out. Um, but I have seen racism firsthand. I, I support Black Lives Matter. Uh, I believe it's our duty to treat our officers as a profession as they are, but while also making maybe some changes, tweaks that will result in increased transparency, ensure our officers are acting appropriately well into the future. I mean, it, this is the long term we're talking about to take advantage of this scenario of what's going on. Um, some of my thoughts on what to do is I agree with a lot of what a, what a lot of you have said about maybe something like the Groton packed or else uh, citizens oversight if it was really carefully constructed um, there'd be a lot of things you'd have to give some thoughts to you know obviously I, I, I think it's you know I'm actually in favor uh, of reviewing completed complaints uh, you've been able to ask questions provide a report um, not only on agree or not agree like New London but actually been able to make comments and then um, posting our, our uh, complaint um, investigation on our website what the committee says, and then also any potential uh, um, return comments from the police chief. Um, you know, I think if you post that stuff out there and give a chance for that, that you pretty quickly see if there's any real issues. Um, let's see, uh, one second, please. I think, you know, that would be good for not only transparency, but also backup for our officers. I, I've seen complaints where they're completely unfounded and pe or people just won't accept this cut and dry people won't accept it and they'll file the same complaints several times so this is sort of a backup to me to you know show you're doing the right thing so i see it as you know a possible gain for the police um you know further considerations a budget um you're only gonna be able to train these people so much um you're gonna have to have attorneys involved with every legal matter um so you're probably gonna have you know you're gonna have to set aside you know maybe 10, 15,000 a year for legal fees. Um, subpoena power, we know the two town, we have two town attorneys who have said, and they are specialized in municipal law and with our town charter specifically that, uh, well, you cannot provide, without a charter change, you cannot provide subpoena power. Without that change, opinion, and keep in mind, if there's a lawsuit, they have to defend that lawsuit for the town and they've been on record saying it's not allowed. Um, and I myself, until I'm convinced it's legal, I couldn't have the police follow something, so. There would be a lot of work to have to do if we're probably going to have to do a charter change if you're worried it's going to do subpoena power. And that's about a two-year process. Um, let's see. Uh, 
and it, you know keep keep numbers manageable five to seven members i don't think you want a huge number of people and make sure there are people that are open-minded without an axe to grind you know like i said i i see i want to see a balance you know let's have some transparency and i think it can be a help to the police and show that we're doing the right thing because i do believe we are doing the right thing and that's all i got thank you thank you mr burke um any committee members want to respond? Representative Richards, and then Flax. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say that I concur with much of what the town manager just said and the um, statement I made and emailed to uh, the court committee as well as the town manager and our moderator and the town clerk uh, around um, one o'clock this afternoon uh, said something very similar in that I think uh, we need to look at, first of all, a, a situation similar to what the Groton City has that Representative Brusk was talking about, a packed style group, some sort of collaboration between police, uh, town government, and the community at large. And, and look and see how much support there is for something further than that, but for at least to have something along those lines that's gonna open up communication that will encourage good relations between the groups and, and um, have, you know, uh, take on some of the things that are challenges. And, and the, the challenges, and, and I think the reason why we're here is not certainly, as it's been stated, um, not certainly because of something that has happened within the town of Groton, but we are connected to other areas. We're connected to our whole country. And we see that there are things that we do need to address. And, and I would hope we can be proactive in that. And if there is a demand for it from citizens in Groton, I agree that a review board um, that uh, is not gonna be doing subpoena power, is not gonna do investigations, but a review board that would look at what happens already in the chain of command when there is some misconduct and make some sort of statement, either an agreement or perhaps in disagreement with a recommendation um, and have that on record. And I, I think that would be the step to go to if we see that there is support for that in the town. Um, I could read my statement. There's a lot more wordy and other ideas, but hopefully um, you can access that too and, and, and see where I'm coming from on that. Thank you. Um, I forgot one quick thing. Could I add something there real fast? Sure. Um, sorry for that. I missed one line. Uh, just to point out something on subpoena power, the way it works is if someone doesn't show up, you ask a court for the power to subpoena the person. It's not like you yourself are sending a subpoena. You're actually going through the court system in a legal process. It's not a quick thing. Um, same thing, the county the town council has subpoena power for employees. However, they cannot confer that onto other, you can't compel someone to show up for another committee. You can only compel someone to show up at a town council meeting and that's also through court action. Just to make sure everybody understands that. Uh, understood, thank you. That's an important clarification and understanding of subpoena power. Uh, Representative Flax and then Representative Dean Shinbrot and then Councilor Heed. So Representative Flack. Thank you, Representative Thomas. Um, thanks, uh, Tom Manager Burt for speaking and JC for speaking up. Um, I think that uh, the conversations over the last, you know, the, the meetings that we've had have been um, all encompassing from one end of the spectrum to another. Um, it sounds to me like there's a lot of people on this committee who are coming to a conclusion um, that, you know, there's there's a that I think that we're coming, we're, we are, we're agreeing in, in theory on some of these things and that um, that the town of Groton is, a, you know, has a, a, a police department that seems to be treating its citizens very well um, and uh, have been open and transparent as far as I can see. We don't wanna um, project another city's issues onto ours if they don't exist, um, but we wanna make sure that there's some kind of transparency if we want to make sure that something bad doesn't happen. So that I agree with um, what some of the representatives are, are saying with regards to the pact or having a community group that where um, not only the 
um, community can support the police, but the police can support the community. Um, and we see that like in the schools and that kind of thing. And um, so um, I, I, I think that there is um, a light at the end of the tunnel, but I did have a question for John, and that is that from a, from a strictly legal standpoint, I know it's been spoken about a few times, is a, is a pact okay? But or, I mean, can you outline just very quickly what is legal according to the town attorney and what isn't? Well, yeah, I th well, my understanding of the pact is that you're essentially creating dialogue with the public, uh, kind of a same thing as the city. Uh, that, I believe that's what they have there, where you meet with constituents, hear their concerns, address them, work together to improve. Um, I know the police chief has mentioned being in favor of that before. Um, and had already thought about doing that on his own, um, setting up something with, you know, regular thing with the public like that, but um, it's certainly legal, yes. Thanks, John, thank you. Thank you both. Um, Representative Dean Shinbra. Hi, um, thank you, Representative Thomas. Haven't we, uh, Mr. Burt, in the past done coffees, the town police have in the morning, they meet at Starbucks before the pandemic. Yes, and sir. it was open to the public, you could come in and just chit chat with the police officers? Yeah, they were doing that maybe quarterly, I think. Maybe even more than that, but I think it's at least quarterly. And they did that on their own. They weren't pushed by someone else to do that. That was something they thought of doing. Correct. Okay. Uh, Pissarro instituted that. Okay. So that's the beginning. The the other thing I have to ask is in your in your previous job, your previous town out in the Midwest, did you work with any police oversight committee or was there one out there? Uh, you don't see that. It's not really, you don't really see that out in the Midwest, at least as of uh, three years ago. Um, you know, but there's a lot, there many different things are different here from there. So I don't, you know, I wouldn't take, put much, uh, you know, stock into that. I had read that there were only 166 oversight committees in the country. So that's a pretty small number given the amount of towns there are in police forces. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Dean Shinbrook. And Councillor Heed. Uh, thank you, Representative Thomas. First of all, I, I couldn't have said it better than Representative Flax, so um, I would align my remarks with him. Uh, but um, I would also say that I, I had mentioned earlier that there were four takeaways that I had from the, the meeting with the police officers last week, and actually all of those were addressed by, um, by uh, Mr. Burt. And it, it's kind of interesting because, uh, for example, the, the town attorney, we have uh, very good town attorneys and we've always trusted their opinion. We've always followed their advice. They've given us choices and we've, you know, we've made our choices within the parameters of what's legal. And, and so I do want to um, say that we should definitely uh, not look for attorneys outside of, uh, I mean, we can consider their opinions, but we need to, to be very attentive to um, what our town attorneys tell us. Uh, second thing, um, I don't necessarily feel like we've identified the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, and, um, you know, doing a pack would be one way to, to go about doing it. Another way to, to do it would be to set up a task force um, to go out and knock on doors, canvas people and find out, uh, do you have issues or do you have concerns? Are you afraid to report things to the police? You know, what Let's uh, inform you about the ways that we are, that you are able to uh, make complaints. And are there any other um, like approaches that would make it, make it easier? Um, so, you know, I think we, we should consider identifying what problems we want to solve. Um, so that's, that's basically it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Heed. Um, does anyone else want to speak? All right. Um, one, one thing I wanted just to share is, is, is my interest in this subject um, has less to do with like a sense of a problem as much more as it's a philosophical preference. I, you know, I um, appreciate the Constitution and uh, Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights and all that. Um, 
and in throughout all those documents there there's an inherent sense of of uh, civilian control of the overall governance and you know the, the the police department is an extension of town government so in in my mind like i just wanted to do some research as as things developed um you know and this this uh, opportunity with the state law and everything changing and you know the culture uh, the climate of the culture um you know, I was interested in, in, in just seeing what was being done out there, what, what models exist, and, you know, is there a way that we could create a more democratic um, situation in regards to how police departments operate? Um, and if that's a desirable thing, you know, that's up to the community to decide. Uh, so, you know, I was mostly interested in this from an academic point of view. Um, and so a lot of my questions have to do more with just trying to like see what all is at play and and see what dynamics are are you know in in, in play here. So you know it's it's I, I never meant you know and and I'm I, I'm sorry if people took things to be to mean something else as if it was an attack of some kind. It was more just um, you know an assertive inquiry. So there's that. Uh, Councillor Bordelon, uh, just a quick check. Representative Dean Shinbrot, your hand is still up. Are you all set or did you have another comment? All right, I think that's an old hand. Um, Chairman Thomas, yeah. uh, j just quickly, um, before uh, I understand uh, Manager Burt has to take off, um, so mm -hmm. I did have one uh, kind of question and comment for him. Um, in our <clears throat> In our earlier uh, meetings, our, I think our first joint meeting, um, we met with um, Tamara Lanier from the New London NAACP, um, as well as um, a, the uh, Policy Council from the ACLU, um, and they both shared their perspective on um, uh, the you know uh, whether it was appropriate the town should establish a CPRB and uh, offered their insights and expertise on um, you know how they helped uh, have helped other municipalities create. You know, such a such an oversight body, um, but <clears throat> Ms. Lanier made a kind of free uh, kind of asked us three questions: uh, What type of CPRB does Groton need? Uh, what authority should CP the CPRB have? And uh, are the subpoena powers necessary for the CPRP to the CPBR uh, Civilian Police Review Board to function properly? So, um, you know, I, I would agree. I think those are really three key questions. We, um, at least as a you know counselor. And um, you know, part of my willingness to work with uh, the RTM committee was to answer those very questions. So, um, just um, uh, Mr. Bird, do you have any comments on that? I don't know if I really heard a question. I actually watched that meeting. I saw that. I will say though, uh, unless you specialize in municipal law, um, first of all. You got to listen more to our attorneys than other attorneys. And unless you're specialized in municipal law, a lot of attorneys think they know what they're talking about. And they don't always. But um, we, if we we're ever going to look at speed of power, it, we're going to have to have a lot more attorney opinions to try to get to that point. But um, I agree overall with them. You know, what do you need? You know, and maybe I don't know if a survey is the best way or just uh, act first where you maybe hold a few pack meetings where you reach out to people and see if they want to go further and have a civilian review board. Um, again, uh, unless I got to make it clear, the police report to me per the charter, unless I'm convinced and the attorneys are convinced that it's legal for subpoena power, I, I would not and could not make the police report do that. Um, I'm going to make that clear. That's, that's not how it works. Um, we're not, I'm not going to go against what I think is the law, but, uh, but I do think start a pact maybe, and then reach out and maybe, I don't know, maybe do a few meetings with the public and then see what they want to do. Surveys are hard, you know, it's easy to, unless you really hire a high-end professional survey company, you can easily sway things. There's ways to get around and vote on certain things a million times. I've seen it done over and over in my career. So a survey is not the way to go unless you're going to want to pay 50000 for it. Um, I'd say in-person in meetings, broadly advertised, and maybe at a variety of different times so that you can get a variety of people doing a variety of places, a variety of times. Well, I guess we're in the Zoom era, so I guess that changes. <laughs> so, but a variety of times anyways, so. 
but again, I, you know, I don't see, I don't see harm in a civilian oversight if it's done properly and legally. Thank you, Mr. Burt. Councilor Baumgartner. And I, and I do have to slip off now. Uh, Councilor Bordelon. I, um, sorry, one more. Chairman, uh, Chairman, I'm going to switch trans or transfer control to you. Is that okay, okay. for you to yep. do it? That's fine. Thank you. So, um, I'm not able to ask you a question, uh, town manager. If it's really, really fast. No, it's fine. It, well, I'll catch you another time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else have anything to offer? All right. Um, all right. So, other than that, um, that concludes our our um, agenda items for the new business. Um, so we have other business to discuss. Um, open a suggestion on that. If anyone has anything to to share, just some housekeeping. Um, you know, I know we have done many joint committee meetings, uh, both Quark and Public Safety Committee meeting. Uh, part of the reason for doing that was to allow um, uh, as many people to uh, participate in the deliberative process as possible, um, you know, and uh, so to, you know, to avoid duplication and to, to avoid, you know, uh, attorneys or outside groups or community members to have to attend several meetings. Um, if there's an opportunity to ask, uh, you know, two, two bodies of our town to ask, you know, uh, you know, very pointed questions and without having to ask it at another time, I think that would be welcomed by everybody considering each of us have very, very busy personal uh, and professional work and professional schedules. Um, so I, I would welcome that opportunity if we continue to do so with um, uh, John Burt, police officers, community members, et cetera. Um, that way we can avoid um, duplicative meetings. Um, with that being said, <clears throat> I would like um, you know, I'll speak as a chair, but also kind of personally speaking, um, I'm a bit disappointed by many remarks that have been made in the last few days uh, regarding counselors, um, um, you know, or, or officers um, feeling demoralized by community members and specifically elected officials on this body. Uh, I take that charge very seriously. I don't strive to do that. Um, I, I, uh, you know, have not been personally, um, you know, uh, attacked for doing so, but I have heard, again, the statement that counselors and, com and uh, court committee members um, are demoralizing police officers. So, again, we've afforded people from the community to participate in these meetings, and if they would like to speak up and voice those concerns, I would much rather hear people who, are, who personally feel attacked to do so uh, and not through other members of this community. I would especially hope that if there are those personal feelings out there, that committee members take the opportunity to personally reach out to me and express that. Again, this is not about saving face, but this is about doing honest work for the people. And I, I don't want this committee to engage in, um, you, know, um, you know, back and forth or slanderous activity when we are above that. Uh, well above that, especially given uh, the behaviors I've seen in Groton politics over the last week. Um, so we will not have that or tolerate that in this committee. I refuse. I think I've already had a, con a, a conversation with Chairman Thomas about this, and I've also expressed my displeasure about this with our moderator uh, um, as well, I'm sorry, with our, our mayor. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think I don't have any personal animus towards this committee. I think I've expressed that um, time and time again at every single committee meeting. At the end of every committee meeting, I, I've recognized the importance of this committee and working uh, both committees and working in a bipartisan and quite frankly a nonpartisan manner, fact find and have personal respect for one another. So um, I mean that I stand by that. Again, I'm not um, alleging that any person on this committee is engaging in that. But I again, I've heard. Uh, that there's a lot of disrespect going around and I think we need to be very specific about uh, those charges if, if those charges are going to continuously be made. So I just want to express that um, I think each and every one of you for being a part of this and uh, nothing further to say.
Thank you, Councillor Baumgartner. Um, so, Representative Dean Shinbrock? I'd like to say something. I think that as an officer, and I'm not an officer, and I don't have family members except for my grandfather, who is an officer. Uh, we're all in business or engineers in our household. I would feel as though I was being critiqued all of a sudden if I had to account for what I was doing when there haven't been problems right along. And those problems that may have come up have been handled rather well, I think, by people in charge. As an educator, I would not want to be critiqued by non-educators because they don't know my job. And until you are actually in someone's shoes and you have done their job, you don't know what it's like. You don't know, you have no idea. I can't design a submarine, but my husband can. I don't wanna be a police officer because I'm scared. So I'm just thankful for the people who do, but I certainly wouldn't want you coming into my classroom and telling me how to run it and telling me how to work with a special needs student because I don't think you would know. I don't care how much training you might have where you took a three hour class here or a five hour class there. You still wouldn't know what my 35 years of experience bring to that job. And that's, I think, how many officers feel. Why all of a sudden do they need to be critiqued when they've been doing a reasonably good job? They're not perfect, no one is. No one's perfect in their job. We need to cut them enough slack to say, we honor you, we're really thankful that you go out on the calls that we don't want to do. I'm now done. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Representative Dean Shinbrot. Uh, Councilor Bordelon? Thank you, Representative Shinbrot. I agree with you on many points that you have spoken of. And I agree it is hard because not everybody knows what you know everyone does on a daily, on a daily basis. I think, you know, nationally what has happened and some things not too far from us even, I think it, the initial intent is not to critique anybody and I don't want anybody to come tell me to do my job, but we are all critiqued in some way in our profession. Even, I, 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 the slander I've heard towards um, school teachers um, with the distance learning that, oh, you know, they got all this extra time off. That's not fair to say. I, I know I know teachers that are up till eight o'clock midnight typing trying to make sure they've never done digital classrooms before right uh, so you know um, we, we all are critiqued in some way at all of our professions and so I, I agree with you you're right I think what came down nationally was a chance to do research to look locally to look to see and and, and, and say what everyone is saying not research doesn't mean that anyone is doing anything wrong that, you know, it doesn't mean that, that there's anything wrong here. It's a chance to open those lines of communication. And there's some things that have come forward that we've gained already that, that, um, um, you know, chief, uh, chief Fasaro has uh, stated that, you know, would be great. Um, our town manager has stated, um, the RTM members, um, have come forward with some great ideas. Um, so, it, yes, that's great that it hasn't happened here, and it's but it's great to look to see ways that we can enhance and improve and add things. And it doesn't; it's not a criticism that um, we're trying to change their job. What came down from the state, you know, um, was just another motivation um, to look to see in comparison to what was going on um, around us. So, I guess I. Depend, it depends on everyone has a different stance when they come before with their feelings towards this or, or, or their, their knowledge behind it. Um, but I guess my position when I decided to get involved with this wasn't that I was thinking of critiquing their jobs or in any way saying that anything was wrong. It, 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 it's a chance to um, look at ways we can um, collaborate as a community and, and uh, work together. So, um, I, I mean, just everybody before us has all different uh, talents and, and I agree that there, there's no way that we could all jump into any of those roles um, and change them. But as it was stated last night, the structure of government, 
um, and I can't remember and I apologize exactly who said it, but you know, the, the chief reports to the town manager and the town manager, you know, handles all the things. And then if it needs to go forward, the town council then handles it. When you look at the representative body on there, we, we do not have one law enforcement officer on there. We don't have one person on there that has a law enforcement background, but yet we could be tasked with to decide those types of things. So a, a committee um, or review board would actually, the only difference would be an elected versus um, a community representation, which I think is actually, my thought would be um, a, another umbrella or a chance to have um, uh, other involvement in collaboration. So um, as you so nicely uh, stated, Representative uh, Shinbara, you know, the council is, you know, John Burt doesn't have a, a degree. Our town manager is not a police trained, um, you know, that that's not, you know, um, you know, you, you know, he works collaborative, collaboratively with the police chief, but um, th that's, you know, you, we all could use some, you know, information on all of this, but none of us, um, I don't have a background in finance. I'm learning a lot about budget from the town council, um, but it's, it is hard. So I, I respectfully hear what you're saying and um, agree with you on many of your points. I again, restate that my intention is to look at ways that we could collaboratively work. I have, I know the coffee things that you had brought up, brought up, I have attended and those were nice, um, you know, at uh, um, Starbucks, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to have community events, um, but there could be more ideas. And so having this group to collaborate opens up doors. Um, and the safety committee, the task of the safety committee, the first task that was presented to us from our, 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 our mayor was to do this, um, but the safety committee is gonna be a standing committee and that's gonna look at ambulance, um, it could, it, safety is a broad thing. So I also look at the safety committee coming back in a positive way, take out just this police oversight, look at it as an extension of a safety committee for the whole of town um, collaboratively, not just law enforcement. So I think, I feel as, as, as Councillor Bumgarner, Bumgarner had stated, some of this stuff is like stewing into more than it's just, no one's made any decisions. No one said, this is what we're doing. Um, some remarks were made about the attorney. I know I was one of the ones who made one of the remarks about the attorney. I was simply asking, when, you, when you're sick and you go to the doctor, you might look for uh, a second opinion. It doesn't mean that other doctor's not qualified. You wanna collaborate. So I was simply asking, we have one attorney's opinion. If you've ever dealt with an attorney, you, you, might, you pick and choose, you interview which one you're gonna use. And you might have them all get to the final point, but the direction could be a little different. So I was interested to see, or thought would be interesting, to see what other views are out there and, and have a, a fair representation. So that's, those are my thoughts on that. But um, again, I couldn't agree with you more on your thought, thought process. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bordelon. Um, so anyone else? Have yes. I see uh, moderator Evan has her hand raised. Oh, uh, I missed that somehow. Is she, where is she? Oh, okay, moderator Evan. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that there's a really distinct difference between um, having, I mean, I'm a teacher and I have people who come in and monitor my teaching, but police officers are entrusted by our community to serve our community, but also to carry lethal weapons. And I think that's a real distinction between other occupations. And I think that's a distinction that does entail oversight almost innately. Um, and I also think that I'm glad that our for and I'm, <laughs> I understand our force is amazing. Um, and I'm glad they've all had implicit bias training, but implicit bias isn't the kind of thing that you take training and then it disappears. It's the kind of thing you have to constantly work at. I've done it and you know, it's, it's, it's very tough to overcome the ingrained structures, the cultural and social ways of thinking that we've grown up with. Uh, even, you know, um, when I've done it, I've done it, you know, uh, focused not just on say, um, 
you know, people of color, but also women. And what I found was I had in implicit bias against women. I'm a woman in science, and yet I had structures within myself that made me, you know, and I didn't even know it, um, that, that made me think differently about women in certain positions than men. So I don't think that one time is enough. I think it's a constant thing we have to keep doing. Um, and I'm glad that we have this. But I do think that having a, you know, and I'll just say whatever this group comes up with, the town council rather, um, it, I do think that there could be real two-way benefits. And I think Mr. Burke mentioned this. Um, I think that it will give the town, the public, a chance to meet the police, but I think it will also give the police a chance to meet and encounter a diverse, hopefully, a, a diversity of residents in Groton. Uh, and I think that's really the best way of countering implicit bias, is to have working relationships and develop real relationships um, with, with people. So, I mean, I do think that there could be win-wins coming out of this. Um, but I, I, I do, you know, and I'll just leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you, Moderator Eben. I see Representative Rusk. Representative Rusk, Rusk and a puppy dog. Yeah, you're muted. Sorry. Um, so I just have a, a kind of a question about where the structure would be um, for a civilian oversight committee if we, um, if the town council decided to go in that direction. Um, as I see it, the police are, um, have oversight by John Burt, by the town manager, um, who ultimately then can go to the town council, um, who are elected officials who oversight, who have oversight over um, if there's any problems with the police or any other department. Um, that being said, if you had an oversight committee, where would that fall in that structure? And with that, I'm gonna go off and actually let my dog out real quick. Okay. Um, well, I, I have an answer for that, I think, but um, I'll let someone else take a swing at that. Uh, Representative Richards. Um, I guess that depends what kind of board that is, right? There are a lot of options. If it is a review board, the chain would be exactly as Representative Frost already said, that wouldn't be changed. Um, a review board would just look at the work that was done um, by the police chief and if it had gone to the town manager to them as well and make a statement about whether or not they think that the outcome was appropriate. They would not be giving disciplinary action. Um, that's the review board that I suggested if there's support for it in the community, um, but it could be all kinds of things. It depends on how it's set up. It could have other powers. It could investigate. And that I think is how we started, right? That's how we looked at um, for those who were able to um, the, the, the webinar from um, the National Association for the Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement reviewed all of those kinds of options. Thank you, Representative Richards. Uh, yeah, and to build off of that, um, there, there, it all depends on the model we choose or, or the, the town council chooses. Um, but based on my understanding of, of all this is that I think the simplest way to do it uh, that would not involve any sort of crazy charter change would be to make the review board, whatever we end up calling it, whatever actual um, powers it has, would be an, an extension of the town council, it would be like a subcommittee of the town council that would include others. So it'd be under the umbrella of the town council, thereby not disrupting the chain of command that already exists uh, in the town charter. Uh, Representative Richards, I see your hand up. Are you have another thought? In, uh, just quick, quickly, um, Chairman Thomas, um, you know, to piggyback off of Representative Richards' statement, um, you know, it, it's important that the a CPRB does not direct um, direct town staff. It does not discipline town staff, and and um, you know, I, that's one thing I would like to see. Really, the RTM um, Research Committee once, yeah, you know, as it fleshes out its research, um, you know, what does that guidance look like? What does that oversight look like? But again, in no way 
um, would I advocate for or would be legally permissible, um, you know, would be, you know, having a, a CPRB that would be responsible for discipline and, and um, you know, discipline and, and directing town, uh, town police officers. Thank you, Councillor Bumgarner. Councillor Bordelon? Yeah, just to piggyback off what was just stated, um, I also was thinking, or what I have seen or thought from some notes I have, was that, yeah, it would be in collaboration with the town council and would just open up the opportunity to have some non-elected civilians to be involved to have um, some insight and um, knowledge, which they could end up having more knowledge than the town council could, depending on who you selected on there. I mean, you could be selecting people on that uh, review board that have a former uh, probation officer or maybe a former correction officer or a former cop or somebody, you know, with more background and more knowledge than a town council member would have. So having a civilian, just as it states a civilian review board, I guess my thought process was that it would work in conjunction and as Councillor Bumgarner stated, it wouldn't have the power to, obviously John Burt would still be, but if something came down, it would have to come to the council and the council collaborate with the CRB and um, then kind of put forward a recommendation or what have you, and John would have some action items and things like that. So I guess I see it as um, a much more um, knowledgeable group of people than what, you know, um, or could be depending on who we got to volunteer for that group on the civilian side. So um, that, that it could benefit the town. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bertillon. And yeah, to, to again, piggyback off of that, um, you know, yeah, I see, I see probably the, the, the best arrangement would be something like that, where it's a collaborative effort. There's no direct contact between the CPRB uh, and, you know, as far as direct authority over the police, it go through the chain of command that's already established, no one be circumvented. And a lot of the models that uh, are out there um, all recommend heavily having um, some broad base of diversity, diversity as a strength in this, in this body. And a part of that diversity would come from law enforcement experience. And a number of our guests um, over, the, over the weeks, uh, in particular, Ms. Lanier, and Ms. Moore um, from that August 20th meeting, um, they recommended heavily having um, a, a good portion of the board have law enforcement, enforcement experience so that uh, they could bring that you know, to bear, but also the importance of having other stakeholders from the community that could maybe temper, you know, because anyone, you know, operating in the echo chamber can start like a confirmation bias thing going so having other voices in the room, other perspectives can be very helpful just to kind of like check the institutional think uh, that or group institutional group think that can occur sometimes. Well, that, that, that's a very important uh, Chairman Thomas. You know, I, I would note that, um, you know, Ms. Lanier herself had law enforcement, uh, significant law enforcement experience and is a retired law enforcement official as well. Um, you know, I'd also note that, you know, and I, I um, for example, uh, Representative Anthony Nolan, who um, you know was a key uh, key vote, and um, you know for the police accountability bill, he too is a police officer, an African American police officer in New London, um, also wears the hat of being an elected official, um, and so you know certainly his someone like that uh, and his perspective would certainly be welcomed, even though uh, in many respects, and he state he he has even stated publicly since uh, the state. You know, under took an effort to um, introduce uh, police accountability measures, um, faced um, a lot of attacks in the process. Um, and so, you know, I think it is important, obviously, to have people of um, you know law enforcement backgrounds involved. But I think it's also important um, that um, you know whomever would be a part of this CPRP, um, their their track records and their uh, applications for such a committee would be closely scrutinized, uh, considering that. We would want folks who, um, you know, have had um, implicit bias training um, and are, you know, uh, obviously um, aware of, uh, you know, uh, certainly, um, you know, uh, treating um, people of all races, um, religions, creeds, um, et cetera, uh, with um, equal, um, uh, equal respect. I, if I could just 
piggyback off of that, I was just going to say it would also allow for a um, more bipartisan. Um, if you have an all elected uh, council of one party, you your CRB could be a plethora of knowledge, not as well as um, it wouldn't be a political issue, right? Uh, as well, it would it would have a, a very diverse representation, or could have. Thank you. Yeah, that's a fair point. I, I think it's important, like that, whatever the committee form it takes would would have something that, you know, would not be politically influenced necessarily, um, but would have to work in conjunction with the town council. So, there would be a, a representative accountability there to, to the public at large. Um, anyone else have any thoughts? All right. Uh, well, if there's nothing further, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. All right. Uh, moved by Rusk, seconded by Dean Shinbrook. All right. All in favor, say aye. All right. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Any abstentions? All right. Um, as far as the RTM side, uh, we are adjourned. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn from uh, my fellow counselors. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Hayde, properly seconded by uh, Bordelon. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Good to see everybody. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night.